Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Bear Bar Tales. It is I, the bear who refuses to wear pants, because if Blue and Little John didn't, then neither do I. The Bear Bard. Look, I know the reputation us bards have, that we gallivant around sleeping with anything and everything. That we are just as likely to sleep with our enemy as slay them. That we choose our own spells more for out of combat rather than in combat encounters. And while I can't necessarily dispel these claims, as they're not exactly what I'd call wrong, a good bard knows when to respect the line. We understand that while most people, when they see and hear us perform, throw themselves at us, obviously. If they don't, it's okay. We can move on. The people in these stories today unfortunately did not get this memo and clearly have trouble with that line. Before we get started, if you like this type of content, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Every sub I get gets me one step closer to conquering all of YouTube and becoming the Bear Supreme. For now though, let's get to the first story today titled, I Don't Want to Be a Horny Character. I started playing in a 5e game that I found while perusing a local game store. It was a 5th level party that had a sorcerer, warlock, and a bard. I thought it was an interesting group dynamic. When I asked what class they'd like me to play, they said, whatever you want. I have a favorite character, a swashbuckling rogue who is also my first character ever, that I wanted to play as again. So I remade him as a 5th level and showed up to my first game with them the next week. It was a pretty normal start. The DM introduced my character in an awesome way, we had a great combat encounter, and the game was going swimmingly. It was so good I was starting to think, oh man, this is the perfect group for my style. Of course, this is a horror story sub, so where's the horror? Well, it starts at the local inn. Immediately, the other players are trying to seduce any NPC that is mentioned. Innkeeper to barmaid, dive flower, cook, stable worker, rat in the kitchen, the town drunk, etc. There's even some RP between the players. The players and the DM going into quite a lot of detail of their escapades. Eventually noticed I was not participating in this RP. The DM asked me what my character was doing. He gets the key to his wealthy, one gold piece room, goes to his room, and uses his sending stone to his wife. I said, the DM responds with, your character is hundreds of miles away from his wife. You sure he's not extra lonely tonight? The other players are encouraging me to engage with that style of play as well. I let them know, in character, that my only love was my wife, and she was the only thing that could steal me away from the sea. I really wasn't put off too much by the RP, it seemed all in character, however weird. It did seem off that they were not embarrassed doing this in a public place at a game store. However, their reaction to this was striking to me. They told me of course my character would cheat, he's a rogue. That's what they do. Wouldn't you cheat after so long away? The one female player in the group was ravenous and demanded that her character could seduce mine and tried to roll for it. My roll won, but the DM decided to give her inspiration to try again. This is where, two and a half hours into the sesh, I got up and said I'm done for the night and went home. TLDR, my character is a loving husband. The other players and DM couldn't understand that and kept pushing the issue until I left. Here we see the rare reverse horny group where all but one in the group is attempting to bang everything. This group type is almost worse than the reverse, as in cases like this, the one lone person can be pressured into situations they're not comfortable with. You know, the same peer pressure every dare rep told you about in school. What makes this even more frustrating is that our OP, while being weirded out by it, wasn't causing any trouble. He was letting them play the way they wanted and just wanted to be left alone, which is the best thing you can ask for in the situation. I think the problem is that they felt guilty. Someone not joining in on this type of play made them think, eh, this may not be the way I should do things. And instead of just either changing or continuing what they were doing, as the OP had no plans in stopping them, they attacked him. I always say there's a table for everyone. They were obviously about that life. I hope OP found a table more his speed. Our next story is titled, friend invites me to game just so he can fantasize about me sexually. So I wanted to share this story for a while now because not only did it end up being a bad game, but it ended in my best friend of 20 years and I never speaking to one another again. When I say we were close, I mean we were like brothers. 
I got into D&D 5e a few years ago. About a year or two after that, my then best friend lets me know that a mutual friend is going to be running a Curseless Tribe game and wants to know if I'm interested. I know the DM really well and I'm excited and said sure. When? He told me in 15 minutes. I rush online, join the game, and throw together a pretty decent character. Classic half-orc barbarian that likes fine wine and art. Just in time. My best friend is not there. I make small talk with the DM since we are friends and start getting to know the other players. Finally after an hour, my friend joins the chat. His character isn't even ready. By the way, DM told me he had given friend two weeks notice and had asked him to let me know we were playing then so I could have a character ready too. He had two weeks. I had 15 minutes and I still had a good character ready in time. About an hour later, we help him understand what a wizard class is. He insisted on wizard, despite having no clue what any of the classes do. And we are finally ready to play. The DM does a great job and we all start to get really into the story. Except for friend. There's an inn you go to early in the module. This can't possibly be a spoiler, right? A group of adventurers go to an inn, and I roleplay my character's interest in fine wine to impress the skeptical locals. Great session overall. Had a lot of fun, even though friend acted distracted. We decide to rest for the evening. Here's where it gets weird. Friend decides he doesn't want to sleep alone. He's a frail wizard. He intentionally played a very old half-elf that was at death's door, and is afraid that someone in this dark and creepy inn may try to harm him. Okay, finally getting some great roleplay. I say, he can bunk with me. Lucid will keep him safe. Lucid will even let him be Little Spoon. Okay, that was a bit of a vulgar joke on my part, I admit, but his response was that he would like that. At this point, I really don't think it is sexual or anything, just that he was scared and cold, and was maybe roleplaying it in a weird way. Heck, even if I did mean it sexually, I wouldn't have necessarily been opposed to roleplaying it, although my character was straight and would have politely turned him down. I agree to it. The next session is where things started to get really disturbing though. Let me now provide a piece of relevant background. I am a bisexual male. I have been my entire life. There was never a time in my life where I didn't think good looking men were, well, good looking. The same thing applies to good looking women. I was ashamed of it for a long time, but in my 30s, I started opening up about it to the people close to me. People like my wife, my parents, and of course, my closest friend. I would come out to all of these people maybe a year before this game started. Back to the game. We leave the inn and begin exploring. I'm being light on details to avoid spoilers. What is relevant is this. My friend, who is late to the session again by the way, is constantly distracted, sometimes making odd breathing noises. DM sometimes has to repeat himself two or three times before friend responds. At one point, he trips and falls at the beginning of a combat. I agree to carry him, and he casts spells against monsters while wrapped around my neck. We all think it's weird, but roll with it. After a few sessions where he was late, he stops showing up. DM gets frustrated and cancels the game. Here's where it went from being weird to, honestly, emotionally devastating. For me at least. Friend and I have always played games together, but now do so rarely and he is very distracted when we do. I ask what's wrong and he doesn't tell me. Finally, he breaks down and speaks to me in very vulgar terms and how I make him feel sexually. He blames me for telling him I was bi because that made him realize he wanted to have sex with me. He tells me all the times he got quiet or was late was because he was fantasizing about me. He told me just hearing my voice made him want to look at porn and or masturbate, which he was doing every time he heard me speak. He then told me it was my fault that he never wanted to speak to me again because I had manipulated him or something. Look, I'm glad that toxic jerk is out of my life. It still hurts though. We had helped each other through some really tough times and for him to start sexualizing me just because he found out I was bisexual and then to blame me for his hangups and ghost me when I won't reciprocate, it still hurts a lot. I hope this makes sense. Just wanted to share this sad story. It put me in a dark place, but I came around. I'm an active player in DM now and have a lot of fun playing with super cool people. Edit spelling. Telling the story was hard and I was honestly in tears while typing this. Made it hard to spiel good. You know, I read the title. I read that title just like all of you heard the title. 
I knew it was going to be bad, but I was so ill prepared for what was there. Before we get to the real stuff, let's cover some little stuff, like the lateness. Don't be that guy. Just show up on time. If the GM can do all that prep and be there on time, you can at least show up. Also, if you're going to play a class, learn that class. Yes, DM is there to help you, but again, they've done so much more in terms of prep, you can at least learn your one character. You have clarification questions? Absolutely, but you should at least have the basics in order. Now, let's get to the super creep factors. First off, how scarring would this whole thing be? After a whole while of this behavior where he's disturbing the group, you then find out he was knocking out some knuckle rockets and just overall losing it to you. You'd have to then rethink their motivations behind every time they were ever around you. Then we get another classic of trying to seduce someone out of game with in-game tactics. Like why? How do people still think those will work? Shoot, maybe I'm the one out of the loop. It actually, <laughs> it actually usually does work and I'm just hearing about the bad times. Anything's possible. Then we get to the good old victim shaming. Like, dude's actions aren't bad enough. He's got to add some rapey ass victim blaming to the end of it. It's your fault I'm shitty and can't handle myself as a human being. I just feel so bad for OP. This situation in just the time frame of this D&D group would be bad enough situation. But this is someone you know and trust, maybe even love as a family member, not in a romantic way. And then it just gets turned on you. You lose your best friend of 20 years, someone that could even be family and replace it with this memory. I want to say I'm so sorry, OP, that this was so tough for you. I hope writing this story out is cathartic for you and helps someone out there with their situation. I could probably keep going on about this second story, but I feel like I've already rambled enough. So switching gears, we have this week's bear fact. Bears have a good sense of memory. In particular, bears remember places where they can find plenty of food and how to get there. This means that even if a bear wanders away, they have a good chance of coming back to where they know there's plenty of food for them. They'll also remember if you leave your campsite a mess, so don't be a dick. This week is also super exciting for me, as I am introducing the Bear Bard's Cave of Art and Wonders, as I've just received my first piece of submitted art from Discord user Spectrum Z, which depicts me sitting down with my loot about to regale my audience with horror story that will never let them sleep peacefully again. They just don't. This honestly was a trip to know somebody sat down and put work into something like this, inspired by my channel. It's humbling to say the least, but I think that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you guys for sticking it out to the end with me. It means a lot to have people enjoying this content all the way through. If you're at this point in the video and have not subscribed yet, I'd love for you to join our little community we have growing. If you're wanting more Bear Bard outside of YouTube, you can find me on Discord, Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, and now even TikTok. Sorry, no twerking yet, but maybe we'll get there. You can also listen to me through your favorite podcast distributor. At the moment, the podcast consists of stories from the channel, just stripped of commentary, but I will be adding more traditional formatted podcasts with special guests you may recognize. That should be a lot of fun, so keep an eye out for that. For now, though, this has been The Bear Bard. Stay kind, stay beautiful, and I'll see you next time.